couple of months, I've realized that I don't like to say that I'm an artist. I feel more accurate saying that I am a piece of art. I think that when you say that you're an artist, you mean that you create artwork of some sort in some medium and that you enjoy to do it but you probably have you know a day job but that does not mean you are less skilled it does not mean you're less creative but when I say something about somebody being an actual piece of art the best example and it's kind of like the like at the far end of what I mean would be bringing up Andy Warhol he was definitely a piece of art and will go down in history forever as being a genius in the art world his work was very eccentric and so was he and his whole career was built on him being Andy Warhol he had a persona that he gave off everywhere he went he was so mysterious there's hardly any information out there about his private life besides a journal or his diary that he left that someone published a couple years after he passed away and but other than that like he, you know everything came out of him and his art and it was so all over the place he what did videotography and he explored you know screen printing he did pop art but he also was you know he worked in the greeting card industry for a while he did quite a bit of things and sure you know he had connections and that definitely helped him out in the long run but overall like Andy Warhol is Andy Warhol because Andy Warhol never stopped being Andy Warhol and that to me is what it means to be a piece of I feel like I was kind of the typical kid when it came to doing art stuff, like nothing really spectacular. I didn't do any art shows or, you know, anything like that as a kid, um, even though I was, you know, in many ways exposed to the art world. But as I got older, I kind of got out of it and was just, you know, in my own world and a lot of bad things happened. and. You know the first 20 years of my life and it, it really drained the color I would say out of me and that is hard to explain but as I got older I got more interested in art and one thing led to another and I actually ended up landing in visual art after many years of exploring other types of art and you know different mediums like music and doing things like public speaking. I've done a lot of different things that have contributed to where I am today. But if I was going to go back to my origins and talk about what has influenced where I am now, I would definitely say that it would have been around 2011, maybe 2010. And when I started doing art as an adult, I was in my tw late 20s. Um, and shortly after, I signed up for college, but I was decided that I was going to be a psychotherapist. So I wasn't trying to pursue art, but the more that I did it and the more people started talking, the more I realized that there was actually career opportunity in art. I found out about commercial art, about service designing, um, about you know getting products into stores, but it was in such a nonchalant way and I was so young and naive and not even really processing what I was being told. Um, I kind of just was like, okay, you know, like, am I going to hand paint every single shirt that I sell? Because that's nuts, right? Like, I couldn't, wasn't grasping what I was missing to make that happen. I'm going to be hand painting clothes all day. That's crazy. That's, that doesn't sound like fun <laughs> at all.
one of the things that has been hard for me is finding a niche. It's taken me a long time and I still am like playing with it a little bit, but I have a general idea and I feel like now that I've got that part figured out, like I don't feel like I have to target like a certain, you know, a man or a woman. I wouldn't be targeting everybody, but within the field that I have picked, like I can create products that are, you know, gonna draw in customers from whether you're a 30 year old or even 50 year old man or a five year old that is, you know, looking for a new comfort toy. The reason that I picked the, the niche that I did and the reason why I feel like it's the perfect niche for me is for one, the artwork is coming out amazing. Like I feel like I'm doing, you know, better work than I was doing even just a few months ago. And I know it's the passion that's there. Um, I decided to play with color theory a little bit. I needed to pick a palette and that I was going to brand. And so I did, and I went with, you know, heavy contrast and neon colors with, you know, maybe blues and blacks and, you know, I'm starting out my portfolio designing an outfit with acrylic paint and paint markers. Um, I painted a skateboard deck, um, a pair of pants that I bought from a very specific company for a very specific reason so I can take a picture of it and hopefully add that to my portfolio, maybe someday even send it to this company because I fit within their niche. And I know that because I've done enough research to know you know, what I'm trying to accomplish. And the reason I picked it is because I know in this specific niche that people buy stickers, they buy bookmarks, they love you know, graphic t-shirts, they are into buying merchandise, keychains, enamel pins, those kinds of things sell like hotcakes. And I know that because I've been watching the market. Now, the difference between coming in to me as a, a person who's setting up at a craft booth and a person who is trying to launch an entire brand and make it into something bigger is the path that you take to do it. And that is um, something that when I'm thinking of like a of avoiding the false path that is what I think like when for me I, I again going back to what I said about being and not being an artist but being a work of art like this is not a choice this is a lifestyle and I have to earn income from this so for me to go spend a ton of money just to sit out at a craft show during a very hard economic time for everybody to me, it doesn't make sense. It seems like the wrong way to go about this. So my turning point for realizing this was when I started entertaining the idea of going ahead and going back to school. And that's what got me here. Letting go of the past is something that is gonna be a little harder to do because I feel that everything that you go through in life is a lesson. And to just let it go makes it sound so easily to detach when, you know, everything that happens to us through life, be that in your career, your real life, like it, it, it shapes who we are. And as a work of art, it's like being sculpted and it just forms a part of you and it doesn't, it's not going to just go away. You can deal with it. You can learn to control it you can you know sometimes you have to ask for help and it's you know it can get serious and you know depression alcoholism drug abuse it's all very correlated with being autistic and that can be scary um and it is scary you know it's hard to let go of but the fun thing about art is that it's such a great healing tool so it's you know it's not even just me chasing a paycheck and a career for me like this is this is so much deeper than that so will I let go of the past I will move through it and I will continue to heal yes but I will never forget what I've been through and I will always let it shape who I am because I've you know survived I've been through a lot and that's why I am able to just continue to be me